Hi, I'm Lewis Alleman, and today I'm going to be reading Chapter 2 of my novel, The Anti-Vampire Tale. Chapter 2, Regarding Wallflowers Light breaks through the openings in the tall bell tower, entering my tired eyes and falling flat on my tired mind, taunting me that I should feel something. It's been so long since I felt anything. As I sit in the grass in the middle of the quad on such a magnificent day, I know I should be feeling some sensation. Class ends and people pour out of old imposing brick buildings, each with a different emotion on their face. Horrified at the test they just failed, relieved with being dismissed for the day, elated with having learned something new. Some of them from out of town smile at the quaintness of catching the streetcar down St. Charles to Carrollton to get lunch. I'm not a jaded hometown girl, but I'm definitely a dulled one. The boys around here drink too much, and they spend too much time making their hair seem perfectly unbrushed and too much money on I listen to Dave Matthews so I must be hip sandals. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with any of that, and it seems every other girl here goes gaga over it. I've even tried it for myself, and all it's done is leave me sitting in the hot late summer grass, feeling as out of place as the church bell tower on this college campus dominated by vocal atheists. Maybe I was just meant to exist in a century past, when the tower was in its prime and courtship was not embedded in superfluous social games played by twenty-somethings having a second teenage decade with adult privileges. But they all seem happy. Am I that much of a mutant that I can't be what they are, or have they never paused long enough to stroll through the same lonely pensive hallways as me? I can't say I'd wish it upon any of them, let them be happy. Even my name, Ruby, doesn't fit me with my brown hair that doesn't resemble any gem I've ever seen. People walk in many directions all around me, cutting across the grass to get to their next class, walking around the paved sidewalk in front of me, or wandering around looking for a nice place to sit. A girl approaches wearing a shirt that reads no fur while holding a mobile phone wrapped in a leather case. A boy passes me with the chain from his wallet jingling at his knees wearing a shirt that says independent, just like 15 other guys on the quad right now who all apparently share the same closet. A group of boys form a hacky sack circle just to the left of me. All of them seem to shine in the sunlight and move around me in a dance I don't know. I feel like a black hole in a sky full of identical stars. Here comes something different. 80s style sunglasses that consist of one thin blade covering her eyes, making her look like a machine. Nose ring, black and white striped stockings in 91 degrees sticky New Orleans weather with a blue pippy long stocking style ponytail on both sides of her head. Amidst the blue hair are traces of red highlights that are more like streaks. That's my crazy friend Ambrosia. I'd call her eccentric, but she works very hard to get people to call her crazy. In fact, she already has people calling her Ambrosia when the name on her official schedule is Amber. What's that chica she asks as she plops down in the grass beside me. It's so hard for me to talk to her with her sunglasses on. Makes me feel like I'm talking to the shades and not her. Just hanging out, still have about an hour before I need to be at Riverview High. What are we doing tonight? She asks another question, although I'm not sure she listened to my answer to the first one. I wasn't planning on anything, maybe a movie. Boring. Hey, I'm just not a party girl. Not everybody has to wang chung tonight to have a good time. Lifting up her sunglasses to reveal her yellow color contacts on bloodshot eyes. Everybody needs to wang chung to have a good time. I can't keep from cracking a smile. Come on, Ruby, you have to go out. It's your 19th birthday for Pete's sake. What else are you going to do? Sit in the grass alone getting all philosophical life? Laughing nervously, I say, yeah, right. I'm not that big of a loser yet. The truth stings a little more when it comes from your own lips. Self-realization may be healthy, but sometimes it sucks. Ambrosia smiles wickedly, and I know she's brewing some mayhem for tonight that'll make me wish I was at home clinging to my lonely nerddom. Dropping her blade sunglasses back over her eyes, she says, Then 80s night it is. Oh lord. With Ruby and Ambrosia heading out to 80s night to celebrate her birthday, chapter 2 comes to an end. I will be reading the entire book, so check back next week for chapter 3.